Now, neurologically related problems are many. Uh, we have neurodegenerative problems such as uh, Alzheimer's, dementia, we have other neurologically related problems like uh, Parkinson's and then we have problems like autism. So these are all very, very difficult to treat issues. In fact, until today, the treatment available for problems like autism is, is just basically continuous therapy, physio, speech. These are the only forms of treatment available. However, using stem cell therapy, we have actually seen improvement in patients with problems such as autism, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's. We have seen improvement, although not 100%, but we have seen improvement to an extent where there can be improvement in the quality of life. Autisms, for instance, we have seen children who were unable to say words, being able to at least utter one to two words, being able to obey commands, they have better understanding, being able to perform uh, certain activities like swimming for instance, which previously they were unable to do, but they were able to do after the procedure. In Parkinson's for instance, we have seen patients uh, having significant improvements in tremors, in speech, stuttering. Patients were able to perform activities such as holding a pen and writing, which they were unable to do due to Parkinson's. But after uh, administration of stem cells, they were actually able to uh, start writing, even though not completely proper, but much better than before. So these are the illnesses which we are trying to tackle. We are trying to tackle them and of course, uh, I will be straight up with you, uh, it still requires some fine tuning, but we are on the verge of finding a solution. Uh, for problems such as Alzheimer's, dementia, Parkinson's, autism. So it's only a matter of time. But if you're looking for improvement in the quality, then definitely we have seen cases with much improvement. Neurologically related problems are a little bit more complex to understand. Some of the problems, for instance, Alzheimer's, uh, the cause of Alzheimer's until today is still a little bit of a mystery. Although we do realize that there may be some relation with uh, genetics, for instance, or autoimmune problems or environmental factors, but we are still unable to pinpoint the exact cause. What we do understand is that they are all neurologically linked. That means they affect the brain, they affect the nerves, and they affect the motor function, which is the muscular function, the movement. So what we know stem cells can do is it can repair nerves, it can repair damage to the brain, it can repair damage to uh, muscular and the soft tissues. But what we don't understand is because of the cause, the unknown cause of these problems. So therefore, we have not been able to create a system or a protocol of therapy for this particular problem. So we can't tell you that you do two sessions and then you'll be fine. What we are trying to do is we are trying to see to what extent it will take or it will require us to administer stem cell therapy before we can obtain perfect or 100% recovery for patients. So, the cause is very important. If we are able to find the cause, for instance, if there is a genetic problem involved, then we may be able to focus our therapy more towards that aspect. So a thorough investigation, a thorough screening before we identify the causes required. And if the screening is done and we can at least try to narrow down the scope, then the therapy will be much better. If we are unable to do it, then of course it will be a general therapy. But nevertheless, if you can see improvement despite understanding what the cause of these problems are, I think that is something worth looking at. Uh, we've had patients with uh, problems such as Parkinson's and multiple sclerosis. We've had patients with problems such as psoriasis before. Uh, my patients with Parkinson's did show improvement, not 100%, but at least there was improvement good enough to make changes to their life. For instance, they were able to hold the spoon and eat properly without having the food drop off the spoon. However, what we noticed is there were certain uh, situations whereby the uh, tremors would come back again. For instance, if the patient was under a lot of stress, the tremors tend to come back a little bit. But uh, generally, they were doing much better and they had better function in the sense of uh, when you have Parkinson's, your energy or your strength becomes less. When the patient took the stem cells, uh, she actually showed improvement in strength as well. So she was able to do more things uh, without too much of hesitation. For multiple sclerosis, we had one patient this far. Uh, she showed 
good improvement initially when the therapy was done but subsequently the deterioration came back again now multiple sclerosis is also an idiopathic problem that is we don't understand why it actually happens but what we notice is every time we gave her the stem cells she was okay for a certain period of time which means that the problem was not completely solved but what stem cells was doing was probably buying her more time so it was giving her a period without any problems Therefore, we have considered the possibility of frequent sessions. That means she may have to come back and do a session every three months or six months once in order to prevent the problem from progressing. So we keep it at a, a maintained level. Talking about psoriasis, our patient had improvement, but he had a flare-up first. So there was a flare-up because psoriasis is partially autoimmune as well. There was a flare-up and after the flare-up, the patient showed improvement. But these problems usually do it with combination therapy. That means when we say combination therapy, it means we will also encourage you to do certain lifestyle changes which may help to reduce the effect of the problem. Therefore, stem cells, uh, I, I, would, I believe, is uh, something that has to be done together with, it's not magic, it's not promise cure or it's not something which is uh, just you know out of the sky. It's something that is very science-based but we must understand how to manage it. That means when we are administering stem cells, we also have to do what is necessary to take care of those cells. It's not a ticket that you can just you know, do anything. It's, it's not that. It's like a second chance, but nevertheless, you have to ensure that you are also taking the necessary precaution and the steps to maintain the quality of the cells and to make sure that the problem does not suffice again.